Yeah, it is. Uh, it is official, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to your Liberty Radio. Welcome back to your Friday night open lines. The uh, the best kept secret on the interwebs for um, you know however much longer that lasts. That's uh, that is anybody's guess. Uh, but uh, welcome back. Once again, we are here tonight to take your calls and find out what is on your mind. Call up and let us know. The link to the stream is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel. It is also in the New Prisoners Telegram chat channel. Uh, the, The operative word there is chat channel. You have to be in the right channel to find that one, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you dial into the stream. Uh, Various other folks have been sent their own links in. Uh, A couple of them have already arrived. Uh, Probably the biggest thing I need to remind you guys about, a couple of things before we get started. You don't need to turn on your camera for crying out loud. Would you all quit bitching about this shit? All right. You don't have to show your face on the interwebs if you don't want to. I completely understand. You do need to turn on your microphone, though. Seriously, I don't know why I have to keep saying this every damn week. It's it's really it's getting old people. Come on. Figure the shit out. Um. Oh, one more, uh, one more programming note. Uh, this coming Tuesday, two hours from the vault, will not air this Tuesday night, August 20th. Uh, instead, we will be welcoming author and researcher Terry Wolf into the Liberty Radio Studios uh, oh, at yeah. 9 p.m. Central Time. So uh, mark Blammo. that one down on your calendars. It should be a good time. Terry Wolf is some sativa weeds. I just got to get that in. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He's the real deal Evander Holyfield. You know what I'm saying? So where do you know uh, where do you know Terry Wolf from? Well, I've seen one of his interviews before, um, and I really want to read that. Um, let me look it up here. I don't want to attribute him to the wrong. Yeah, you're he way was- too far away from the microphone, man. <laughs> I don't want to attribute Terry Wolf to the wrong book. Right. Gotcha. He read a CNN article, and he really agreed with it. I figured is that it, was probably fire about in the what rabbit it was. hole. The who it, it did fire what to whose hole? hole? What? No. Good lord, Yona. What the hell hey, are you, you watching? How you guys Terry doing? Terry Wolf. What's going on, Rob? Fire in the rabbit hole. See, I'm probably thinking of the wrong Terry Wolf. I think I think you're thinking of the wrong wolf. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. All right, let's so see. Apparently, there's these. more than one Terry Wolf on planet Earth. I don't have that problem with Yona Aniwodi, you know. Oh, yeah? Well, if I made up a name, people wouldn't have it either, too, you know? Uh, oh, that is actually, I, I'm going to ask him that question because. Uh, Dan, there there was, actually is more than one Yona Aniwodi, by the way. Is there really? Yona is fair. It's a very common name. Aniwodi is the last name of about 40% of Cherokee. So there you go. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> kind of like John Doe in Cherokee. That's the joke. But no one got it. But anyway. Well, no, there was a, uh, there was a young lady that was going to write uh, for Manufacturing Reality under the uh, pseudonym of uh, something or other Wolf. I can't remember uh, what it was, the the first name. Um, But apparently Wolf is a popular pen name for authors, you know, paying homage to uh, uh, Virginia Wolf and all of that sort of shit. Uh, And other authors that have also used the name Wolf uh, down through the years. And you can get creative with it, too. You can go like W-O-L-F-F-E, like yeah, however you want to do it. Gaelic spelling or something. But that is one of the the questions that I plan to ask him if that is his real name. Because I mean, it's you just you have to do that, right? Got to know. Yeah, not that he'll tell you anyway, but right. 
And you also has to, have to ask Wolf if he's ever worn a, a sheep's clothing. It's oh, a Fabian like joke. Anyway. If you're main pain where, where, this where's week, the car crash noise? You're supposed to have that button on the ready drizzle. Oh, I'm I'm doing other work, man. Seriously. You you were supposed to warm up during the pre show in the chat. Come on. <laughs> Lord oh, Miller. I oh I most certainly did. I'm educating people on how to say smoke more of the weeds and foreign languages and shit. Oh. Like uh, tonight's lesson is in Deadfellas native tongue of Bangla. Are y'all ready? <clears throat> Repeat after the Yona. Beshi, like Bessie, but with the S H. Beshi, Kore, Ganja, Khan. Beshi, Kore, Ganja, Khan. What does that mean? Smoke more of the weeds. Anyway. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so next time you're at the 7 Eleven getting a Slurpee, you know, tell Apu over there. Beshi, Kore, Ganja, Khan. I don't think he's going to pick up what I'm putting down. Beji, Corey, whatever, whatever. Ganja Khan. Just remember, ganja, ganja. turns ganja. out ganja is the word for weed. But we kind of already knew that, didn't we, Rob? I, I think so. Yeah, out of that. the four words, Beji, Corey, Ganja Khan. You know, if I didn't know a single fucking word of Bangla, and the dude smells weed on me, and he says, blah, blah, ganja, blah, I know, <laughs> hey, we're about to smoke some ganja. Fuck yeah, bro. Fuck yeah. Break it out. That's Either right. Batteries gonna steal your ganja con. That is Real also a possibility. Yeah. Depends where you're at. Great, you know what I'm saying? We can sit there, pass the joint back and forth, both drop our pants and shit right in the road. It's like we're in San Francisco or Philadelphia or something. <laughs> Shout Detroit. Out Camden. Yeah. So what's on your mind tonight, Rob? Uh I was out to dinner tonight and I saw a uh, Kamala for president commercial and i fortunately oh didn't God. hear the volume yeah but of course they gotta you know put it up on the screen her uh nonsensical claims which and which then, which ones oh you know Do you remember? The, the the strongest uh legislation for border control and um tackling huh? inflation let me see what else was there there, there was quite a few ridiculous but claims. Did going she have down a on Jerome Powell that? is not tackling inflation. I'm sorry. That's just <laughs> well, called a blowjob. Yeah. Well, the, what, what was on the TV was the uh, Phillies versus the Washington Nationals game. So uh, uh, yeah, a couple stoppages of play later, they had a anti-Kamala commercial. But it was one of those, you know, typical stupid attack ads. She's she's a radical was the uh, the text that they were throwing up on the screen. I'm a radical for her work. Oh, well, she is. Yeah, she's revolutionary. Uh, I, I guarantee it. Quick question for you, Rob, and then I, I promise I'll let you uh, take over, Yona. Uh, what was the score of the Nats game? Um, the Phillies were winning 2 nothing. God damn left. it. Wow. I'm sorry, Drew. Yeah, I mean, they they broke up the team after 2019. It was sad. I mean, it was it was a magical year, and then it was just fucking Billy Ball after that. You know, I have the most awesome idea for a music video. If I could go down below the elevated rail line there on Kensington Avenue in Philadelphia, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even need money. You know what I'm saying? I, I can just bring some West Virginia meth. I mean, I got my teeth. Right. Yeah, man. Um, you fit right and, in. Uh, Yo, and you know, I can bring some West could, Virginia yeah. meth, and I can entice Fuck. them Dude, to get onto a in. boat and to cross the Delaware over to Camden <laughs> oh, yeah. and dress them up in you know the the little tri corner hat. That's right. Make sure the that there's one draft. standing up in the front. And I'm gonna pick the yeah. most tweaked out motherfucker to be my George Washington to stand at the bow. It's gonna be fucking awesome, man. There's a flaw in your plan. I mean, geographically, Kensington is not next to the Delaware, so you're gonna have to like migrate them down to like Penn's Landing or uh, yeah, at the the closest crossing point. Parade, camp. homeless parade. Yeah. It's I no mean, problem. It'll be like get, Hansel and get Gretel. I'll just leave a trail of meth crumbs, and they'll <laughs> just me follow me all the way around to the, the to the Franklin Bridge. Fuck it, man. 
I, I can be entrusted to help facilitate this migration plan because I could tell you exactly where they could go, go right across into American Waters uh, parking lot in Camden and then disperse into, you know, paradise. Oh, my God. Drizzle, it's going to be like that episode of South Park. California. Yeah. They love the homeless. I think, I think we should make it happen. <clears throat> It'll be I mean, like the Pied Piper leading the tweakers to Joyzy. Dude, are you kidding? That'll be compelling content. It's like, that shit will go viral in, like, hours. And, dude, we can take the lower level of the Franklin Bridge, man. That They don't even use those transit lines anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What are, you, what are you talking about? That's the train that I drive, I go to work on when I go into the city. They still run trains on the Franklin? Oh, yeah, they do. On the lower level. So, oh, it's just when you get into Philadelphia that you've got all the abandoned track. I forgot we're talking about SEPTA again. No, SEPTA, that's, like like a SEPTA tank, right? That's it's, it's, it's shit sloshing around, but it's on rails. SEPTA. New Jersey, New Jersey Transit. Much less stabbing on New Jersey Transit. Oh, so, well, so the good. Jersey Transit goes across the Franklin, loops around, and then, and then makes it back to, um, uh, well, somewhat drier land. Because of the pine tree. I catch it at the end of the line, Lindenwald, New Jersey, and take it over into Philadelphia. I mean, it's really, it's absolutely scandalous when you look at how the Southeast Pennsylvania Transit Authority used to cover from like King of Prussia and all the way out past Bethlehem. I mean, all across, they had fucking lines everywhere, streetcar lines, all this shit. Can you look at what's left today and the state of maintenance? And it, it's, well, we should talk about Boston's MBTA because it's probably the only one that's worse than SEPTA. I don't know, man. They got trains going everywhere. Most of the people I work with come in through SEPTA outside of Philadelphia. There's a lot of lines that run. Well, they've kept most of the standard gauge rail stuff, but virtually all of the streetcar lines have been wiped out. But, I mean, that that's, you know, Philadelphia was one of the first cities targeted by the American streetcar conspiracy when uh, the big four Detroit companies formed up national city bus lines. And then they went across about 385 municipalities in the United States and destroyed about, I don't know, Five or six billion fucking street cars removed about close to about 140,000 fucking miles of track and mm -hmm. open car dealerships everywhere in the 1950s. And that, folks, is how America fell in love with the automobile. Fuck you. You can drive or walk. We're taking all your goddamn rails out. And it would have been total and complete across the entire country had they not gone after the San Francisco trolley lines. You're but when the uh, San Francisco Levittown. County engineer, or I'm sorry, the San Francisco city engineer, uh, Quimby, when Quimby found out about it, Mayor Quimby, <laughs> um, he went ballistic, went to Congress. There was congressional hearings that made the papers. That was the end of national city bus lines. And it stopped. Oh, wow. And so they saved the trolleys in San Francisco. But that 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 was after Los Angeles's um transit system was just complete, you know, the red car lines and everything, all of it torn out. And now LA County and uh neighboring uh Santa Monica County, or I'm sorry, Orange County, right? The OC. LA County, Orange County have been slowly over well since 82 because it was it really kicked up before the la olympics in 84 where they began to rebuild subway lines for la and now they've been doing it for well over 30 years and just spent an ungodly fortune to do it and they don't even have but like 20 percent of what they had up until 1956 yeah I think it's just staggering i mean if you look at a map of the transit and rail and everything in the united states from like 60 years ago and then and literally in five years whoo it's all just, poof, just fucking vanishes 
They've done now in the last 30 years. Gone. They've done the same now. thing to Greyhound bus lines. They've done the same thing to Amtrak routes. If you look at the original Amtrak service map from 1978, uh, when the National Rail Passenger Corporation was formed, aka Amtrak, because Conrail and you know Penn Central and New York Central and the rest of these fuckhead railroads said, we're not going to carry passengers anymore. Fuck you. So the government took over passenger rail. And uh, you look at the original Amtrak service map, and it was pretty good coverage. I think it covered uh, like over 40 of the 50 states. And you look at the map today, and it's just a skeleton network, and it, it, it's a laughing stock. I mean, unless you're on the Acela Express, which runs on the Northeast Corridor from Richmond, Virginia, up to Boston, uh, South Boston Station. Um, you're going to be on one of the regular Amtrak trains, and because the track is in such bad shape, you know, it's, it's not going to be overhead electric. You're going to be with a diesel locomotive, probably putting along at about 30, maybe 35 miles an hour, like if you're coming to West Virginia or Ohio. or it, it, It's scandalous. It's really scandalous. <laughs> Got a real uh, dissertation on transportation. He's passionate. Pretty, He's very passionate sure, about it. I'm pretty sure if you're in any lo any uh, major city, you can take a train anywhere. I I, I don't oh, share yeah. your beliefs. I think the 15 minute city's coming to you, Yona. You just haven't fucking seen it yet. Just too many too many uh, trees around where you live. <laughs> hmm. Well, they are building a lot of street rail. That's the new mode of they're, they're putting in street rail, street running, like streetcar lines again, where they put the rails in the middle of the fucking street to share with regular traffic as yeah, a way to reduce they're going traffic back to congestion. Electric. They put trains yeah. in the middle of the road, right? And that's going to reduce the congestion by having all the traffic fight with a fucking train. No, the shots are going to reduce the congestion. But the, That's the street what they were designed running trains for. are for the 15 minute smart cities. I thought we were going to use child labor to mine cobalt and uh, lithium to make these batteries that'll allow us. Oh, yeah, to we're still going to do that. Yeah. And, uh, Why would we that? do that? To, uh, what is it? The Vantois, the, the 23 forces, the La the, the Force Vantois, they're, the, the, they're backed by. Um, Damn, I gotta think of what that fucking country is now. Uh, below Burundi, Kampala, Luanda. No, there's Rwanda. Nobody Burundi. knows. Burundi. It's Africa, Yona. Nobody knows. Yeah, well, I'm talking about the Eastern uh, DRC, the the Republique Democratique du Congo, or yeah, Cong Congo, Congo, uh, because they've got the cobalt. And lithium, they're all the rare earths, plus gold mining, yeah. a lot of gold mining. And you've got, um... oh, God damn, I'm going to have to pull up the fucking map. Some of a bitch. I can't oh, fucking remember. You poor baby. Um, I mean, does it matter, oh, where, the, Wanda, does it matter uh, where the child labor is coming from, not, Jonah? Not really. Tan thinks, Uganda. See, Rob, it thinks, was Kampala. Yeah. Kampala he thinks people is are town. listening right Uganda. now. Uganda. There's nobody Uganda listening. Uganda is what it's called. We're <laughs> talking about the mines around Kisangani and the east. It's called Uganda over Kampala. here, okay? Anyway. The, the rebels that are taking over the government right now, they prefer Uganda. Yeah. But they're, they're internationally backed rebels that are going in and stealing the cobalt and lithium and gold and then carrying it back out. And then from Uganda, it makes its way miraculously to France and Belgium. Well, I mean, it's got to come from somewhere to build those batteries, man. They're not going to build themselves. Do you think that cobalt's just going to jump out of the ground? No, you got to have little little children's hands go and pull it out. I got to say, nothing looks as cute as a green-eyed child in a red mud pit with Mine orange water cobalt? on the bottom yeah. when he's got the gray mercury pulled in his hand because he's working with the little gold pebbles. It's such a colorful image. And talk no, they, use, they use cyanide to separate gold from the soil. I have a buddy who's a mine geologist. He told me all about the process. Oh, yeah? Water and cyanide 
Cause yeah, they, they've got the, they, well, where they do it crudely, they just dig these little pits in the dirt and then just dump the shit in there. Basically, what they do is they take core samples and they analyze how many gold particles are in this the sample. And if it seems like it's uh, cost effective, they'll mine it. They're not finding chunks of gold like, you know, they show you on TV, the gold rush. <laughs> there isn't big chunks of gold. I mean, there are veins <laughs> up there. For the most well, part. there are in certain parts of uh, Africa when it comes to gold and diamonds where they have these Kimberley deposits, but it, it's it, it's you, just a unique geologic thing. They use a water cyanide solution to separate the gold. The gold floats to the top, and then they scrape that out, and then they have their harvest, I guess. Oh, yeah, a score. That's, well, it's that's the same thing with lithium. Mining, yeah. In order to mine the lithium and extract the lithium from the ore, You've got these beautiful, huge turquoise and green and orange and red and yellow settling ponds filled with yummy chemicals. Because, you know, making batteries for EVs is environmentally friendly. <laughs> hey, if you wouldn't mind not plugging in your uh, electric car for a couple weeks, uh, the grid's a little strained right now. You know? That's right. <laughs> Everybody has to do their part, Rob. And everyone knows... Going to a uh, charger station that's at the gas station where you can plug in your EV, you'll be charged up faster than someone filling up their gas tank. <laughs> right? I mean, it's going to take them like five or six minutes to fill their gas tank up if they're in a big truck. If you're in an EV, it's only going to take about six or seven hours. My, fa my favorite is the diesel generators that they're using to power the uh, electric charge, the portable. <laughs> That makes it clean. Yeah, that's, that's kind of kind of like the way we use uh, nuclear reactors to boil water to create electricity. Oh. I uh, for for some sick reason I was listening to the Joe Rogan Peter Thiel podcast. So I How got was it, by the way? I'm I'm tempted to listen to it. I really oh, am. Boy. I only got an hour into it of three hours. I couldn't listen to any more. It was just wow. not what happened. Did did your hand get loaded with blood, Rob? Was it too much? <laughs> My hand was loaded with blood. They, oh, they sure, got, they, sure, they, gone. They were talking about climate, and uh, you know, P Peter Thiel actually made a, a good point that he, he was saying that uh, you know anything that they attach science to the name of the cause, like climate science, is usually just a uh, a fraud. And uh, Rogan was like, "What about nuclear science?" He's like, "No, they call that nuclear engineering." <laughs> Hmm. So he made a good point on that, but they're, they're, they're his uh, whole thesis on why we don't use nuclear energy more across the world to, um, you know, minimize the uh, environmental footprint and provide the ability for every country in the world to have, you know, first world type of service was that we gave nuclear reactors to India years ago and they figured out a way to enrich it into weapons grade plutonium and make bombs out of it. And, uh, well, yeah, that's what you do. <clears throat> well, the thing is they could use thorium and, uh, thorium India has thorium reactors and they don't, you know, if they blow up, it doesn't cause the environmental disaster that the nuclear ones do, but you can't make nuclear, you, you can't use them to enrich stuff into nuclear weapon grade material in a thorium reactor so they don't use them here so it's like a, just a big make you know like every other technology to withhold from people yeah well the whole point of the general electric boiling water nuclear reactor like the type that melted down times four at the uh Fukushima Daiichi plant in uh northern Honshu Island Japan mainland Japan you may call it uh, okay. After the uh, Tohoku earthquake in um, March 11th, uh, 2011, right? 311, um, you know, uh, we discovered and it kind of got into the conversation again that, you know, they're using um, highly enriched uranium fuel rods, you know, with nickel and cadmium plating and these alloyed fuel rods that go into a a core reactor uh, to heat the fucking water 
and turn the water into nuclear steam, which then gets fed through a nozzle that then blasts the steam against essentially a mill water wheel, a fucking blades on a fucking turbine, which rotates the fucking said. axle and turns the dynamo. So that's the only a, way we a know how to make electricity. Basically, like a, a locomotive steam engine. Yeah. Um, Boiling water to create all electricity. Types of tritiated that's water and we, radioactivity. I mean, you're, you're, but as a bonus, you also have weapons grade plutonium. So the whole farce of atoms for peace that the Department of Energy started pushing out in the 1950s that, you know, nuclear power has civilian positive uses all bullshit all bullshit the whole purpose of a nuclear reactor is to produce plutonium to make nuclear bombs period in sentence that's it that's all otherwise why would you boil water with nuclear fucking rods and then if you're going to say nuclear is environmentally friendly okay how many fucking coal burning plants do we have on the ohio river and the Tennessee Valley just to enrich the fucking uranium rods at the Paducah gaseous diffusion plant where they make the fucking nuclear fuel rods. I mean, none of these people know what the fuck they're talking about, dude. I mean, that's why TVA damned and destroyed most of the Cherokee homeland in Tennessee to build fucking hydroelectric dams and put in coal plants, make it navigable so they can get the coal barges up to it. To send all that fucking power to Oak Ridge and K2, the secret nuki city, to make fucking nuki bombs. And then they still do to this day. That's where most of the coal goes. To enrich fucking nuclear rods. It takes an incredible amount of electricity to do they gas. do it on their and, own, you know. Uh, uranium enrichment process. That's very Do you think cool. uranium <laughs> just enriches by itself? <laughs> you got to put in work, man. That's serious I, work. I didn't mean to bitch and rant so much. I've just been sure all, you all did. Up. Sure you did. You do it all the time. Uh, <laughs> Rob, Rob, question from the Rumble live stream chat. Tallulah May wants to know what your shirt says. It says you are beautiful, you are powerful, and you are free. Bam. That's what I'm talking about. That is that is the embodiment of Liberty Radio right there, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Once again, uh, this is why Rob is the returning champion <laughs> on Friday nights. And there's still time for you guys to call in, too. You can be part of the madness. You don't have to just sit there and listen to us run our mouths for the next 90 minutes. You can run your mouth live on the interwebs. Uh, we're broadcasting all over the planet at the moment. Uh, all over the Americas, Asia, Europe, Africa even. We actually, we have people that watch in Africa, believe it or not. They told us to stop talking about Africa, just so you guys know. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. They don't want us talking about their, uh, their continent. They're like, fuck you white devils, stay the fuck away. Great so show. There's not too many good things I can say that have happened in the modern era in Germany, post-World War II, considering... They're probably the most ardent supporter of Zionism, um, even more ardently supporting Zionism than America. Imagine that. Um, I mean, and maybe they were supporting it all along. Right. <laughs> right. They were um, closet well, after, Zionists. After the, the, um, the, the uh, partial core meltdown at Pripyat, at the um, Chernobyl, um, nuclear plant there in the Ukraine on the Don River. <laughs> These places are more familiar to people now, thanks to Donetsk. But anyways, um, you know, like Donetsk, where uh, the fucking Nazis in Ukraine just deliberately shelled and killed, I don't know how many dozens of shoppers at the uh, Galactica department store in Donetsk. That was more just a couple days ago, wasn't it? Just a couple days ago. And, yeah. and, and then they used a drone to... Um, light another uh, nuclear plant on fire in the Ukraine. Because um, that's, you know, that's what they do. Um, but uh, the um, after Chernobyl happened and the fallout hit Germany, then when Fukushima Daiichi happened, 
there was a major push in the German public to get rid of their nuclear program, and they did. They they shut down all their nuclear reactors, and they don't fuck with nukes anymore. Uh, France, on the other hand, decided to run in the complete opposite direction. And I mean, France is continuing to outpace the rest of the world when it comes to building new nuclear plants. So, um, uh, again, seems kind of gay to me, but anyway, we are talking about France again. So, you know, it's to why, be expected. Why are we talking about France again? Did we not cover this last night? Or no, Wednesday night. I thought yeah, I yes, covered we it did. Wednesday night. Yes, we did. Look, <laughs> we're not racist, ladies and gentlemen. All right. We just hate France. That's all it is. Stop sending the emails. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, Truth Bear. What's on your mind tonight? I don't know. Just uh, enjoying the conversation. I mean, uh, really? Um, You're enjoying this fucking train wreck. Yeah, <laughs> it's good to hear. Yeah. Good to hear. No, it's it's good conversation. I mean, um, as far as out, you know, how energy goes, and talking about nuclear stuff. Um, and I, I mentioned before in the chat, I believe that nuclear is not what they're telling us it is. Um, you know, um, criticality and uh, uh, energy producing. It's and even the toxicity of it. It's not what they're telling us. And, I don't and, know. Uh, they, they seem to move right back into the places in Japan that got bombed. Yeah. You know, um, you know, uh, when you think about the different types of radiation, there is, you know, alpha, beta, gamma, and the neutrons, um, you know, alpha and gamma, well, alpha, you know, being particulate and then gamma, um, neutron and beta being ener energetic. It's, it's like, well, how is life? growing there and sustaining there and why isn't there this crazy uh, fallout like we're told what what would happen um i don't know they have, there has been some really interesting studies of the um nature conservancy and preserve that surrounds pripyat you know the former nuclear city um that serviced the chernobyl um nuclear plant in the ukraine and of course that's all like no man's land now but there are certain species like uh the animal life thriving there. there's yeah. there's a couple of species that are um very resilient and then there are certain other species that continue to pull up old radiation like um one animal was eating mushrooms that were sending their mycelae so far down into the subsoil that it was still pulling out old radiation. And so that species was bioaccumulating the radiation for its other stuff. So it's just really well, they did. been doing a lot of studies on that. But I, I would point out that, you know, a partial core meltdown with um, just pretty much what's in the what's in the actual fuel pool itself is quite different from an American reactor or like the Japanese reactors where they had their uh, spent fuel uh, storage pools completely filled up and just had nuclear waste just piled all around everywhere. And so then when they had a meltdown and a fire, now they've got all of this nuclear waste, which is the product of scraping out the bottom of reactor for countless fucking cycles. And so, you're no longer talking about just one batch of, you know, fuel rods going bad or one nuclear bomb exploding. When you talk about depleted uranium or nuclear waste, now you're talking about the byproduct of countless, countless, countless reactions. And so you've found a way to concentrate and make the radiation worse, right? Because, you know, you're talking about multiple, multiple, multiple well, batches so, all so clawed into fucking ingots. And for example, yeah. um, you know, they realized that they were using nickel plating on the in, in, on the enriched uranium fuel rods. And so in Huntington, West Virginia, where I'm at, at the special metals plant, um, they had an idea, great idea, um, down in K2, you know, the Oak Ridge, Tennessee, the nuclear city. Um, and they would have these huge 
metal slag pieces they'd have to scrape out of the bottom of the reactor every so often, right? Or all the shit kind of melting together. Um, they're like, you know, we can send that up to the uh, steel plant in Huntington. They can boil these radioactive ingots and skim the nickel off the top. And then we can sell the recycled radioactive aluminum to the Halide Automobile Bumper Plant on the other side of Huntington. It'll be great. It's a great That's business. a win-win. And yeah. so they, they did the Huntington Pilot Program. They recycled the radioactive nickel. Everyone at the bumper plant got fucking cancer and died in 20 years, and they closed the bumper plant. Blammo. <laughs> well, yeah, so, so think about this. Like, like, there's no doubt that if they're doing these <laughs> process, whatever process they're doing, it's going to create waste, and that waste is going to be toxic and and there's so many toxins to the human body that that are out there already um mm -hmm. but these are probably higher concentrations but the premise of what nuclear radiation is again alpha gamma beta and neutrons uh, is is not what's making us sick that's why um there was and i mentioned this before that on crow triple seven he had a guest come on that was a japanese uh woman that she was a child when they dropped the bomb on hiroshima and she remembers and she tells the story of how what what happened to her her mom and her grandmother uh during the hiroshima attack and and then you know i, I you know like many people i've i've been in hiroshima i've been in nagasaki and life is growing there um this fallout what they say it is is not um from from the reaction is is not right but in their processes what they're doing in these plants that waste guy i have no doubt that that's going to be toxic and you will get cancer and it's going to fuck you up well of course you know when we talk about exposure to a nuclear detonation yeah okay it's yeah, quite yeah. different to exposure right. okay. yeah. to a burn pit where depleted uranium ordnance and shells and other yeah. depleted uranium materials are being burned in an open pit at i don't know king khalid military city in the wadi al and during operation desert storm and then everybody that breathes the fucking du fumes off that burn pit yeah true is fucking dead now yeah and you know all the du that we just carpet bombed all over Fallujah after they hung that contractor from the just the Fallujah from the bridge. You yeah. know, uh, I mean, still to this day, I think like uh, a third of all births in Fallujah are like purple eggplants, like just the most grotesque fucking birth defects you've Anybody? ever seen. Just depleted uranium well, nuclear yeah, yeah, waste. Yeah, yeah. Well, exposure yeah, a that's question. a different exposure to regular yeah. nuclear. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just say this real quick that so so I was there right after the fall of Fallujah, right after those contractors got burned. So I was there um, and, um, you know, I'm not, I, I got a lot of health issues now, um, um, but um, I didn't experience that kind of stuff. Um, and, and again, I was there months later. I was there right after the fall. Um, but um, we were going all throughout the city and I didn't see this crazy you know don't go here don't go there or uh, off limits really places awesome. well you know at the time an expendable asset to the government so I, at, I you know if we go crazy. back to yeah. the 1990s <laughs> at the time this happened the expendable there yeah. was no discussion of depleted uranium there was no discussion whatsoever it, if anything it was called like bunker busters or super bomb but well, or maybe you would hear du but no one talked family. about it it was like i mean it, it's the fight for compensation for veterans exposed to depleted uranium um is still ongoing and it's not gotten near as much traction uh as the fight for survivors of agent orange exposure that fought in vietnam but but again you know the vietnam vets have been fighting for agent orange money for decades Gulf War veterans have been fighting for DU compensation for, you know, it's only been about 20, 30 years. Give it another 20, 30 years when they're almost all dead of cancer. Maybe they'll do something about it. But they're never going to admit that highly concentrated toxic nuclear waste is actually toxic. I mean, duh. Well, there was a dude, uh, his videos used to be all over YouTube. Uh, I don't think they are so much anymore. But he would literally, like, he would go and give uh, talks 
to people about uh, what nuclear nuclear material actually was, and like you know, he would do crazy shit. Like he would he would eat like a little bit of plutonium yeah, that, yeah. in the middle of his yeah. you know forty minute speech or whatever, and would do this over and over and over and over again. So is he alive still? <laughs> uh, I don't believe so because he was already he died quite in old. He, oh, he died in a car accident. <laughs> yeah, he was already no, I'm, I'm, like I'm in making his. That up. I'm making that oh. up. Like like one of the one of the. He was the in his fifties or sixties yeah. when he was making these videos, so he was already quite old. Have, have any of you uh, even looked into that plane crash in S South America where the plane was like spinning around? We were talking about it last week. And, you know, sure enough, I guess like Monday or Tuesday next. Yeah, apparently there were some cancer doctors on it or something. Uh, uh -huh. uh, you know, apparently they were going to go blow the whistle on the whole COVID-19 vaccine damages. But, you know, that's just like the same red herring bullshit that just floats out there every time something yeah. happens. Yeah, exactly. Prove it. I do remember a story. Maybe they were in New Jersey, I think, or it may have been Philadelphia, but there was a a watch factory that employed women that would very carefully paint the little hour tick marks inside the, the wrist watches with iridium that would glow in the dark. Right. And, and, and they would actually, uh, where they're using the little uh, paint brushes to, to apply this iridium paint, this radioactive paint on the, tiny little marks for the hours inside the wristwatch, they would then lick the end of the, of the brush. Um, and cool. all these women ended up getting um, like mouth cancer and shit so, from oh, licking yeah, yeah. Um, so, iridium yeah. off their paintbrush. Yeah. Oh, dude. And so you want to, you said something real quick. that. Go, Go ahead. Truth. Go ahead, Truth Bear. No, I was, I was just going to say that that so one of the things that that Tris is talking about is is what would be what would be indicative of particulate radiation like alpha, okay, alpha radiation. That's particulate. If you got if you ingest it. So one of the things that I thought was kind of weird too. Again, so you know, being in the military, um, I was trained on this stuff, and I know what they've trained me for. Um, and one of the things that it said is that what alpha particulates is you can. You can get it on your skin and you can wash it off so long as it doesn't penetrate, right? It doesn't get into right. your, you know, you, 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 you wash it off so it doesn't seep into your soul, you know, your pores or you ingest it in any way. Um, and um, so, yeah, so what you're talking about, Driz, or I'm sorry, Yona is, is putting it on your food. tongue is a bad idea. Yes. <laughs> Don't ingest <laughs> it. <laughs> Don't worst, ingest one of the worst places you could put it is on your tongue because it's going to go right into the bloodstream. As far as I know, I've never had any personal experience with the stuff. So, me, me neither. Um, yeah. I, I, All my I know knowledge what they, is based on nothing. You know, well, I, I know what they've taught me, um, but then when you look at some of these instances, like with uh, Fukushima or with Chernobyl, um, there's questions there. And when you hear okay. testimonies from other peoples that actually lived through it, um, uh, I question a lot of what they tell us about nuclear capability. Yeah. You know, when well, there's, there's another, the uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Rob, but I, I kind of wanted to get to this a few minutes ago. There's another one of those situations occurring right now as we're talking. Because uh, last I knew, the big uh, nuclear plant over in Ukraine was belching <laughs> black smoke a couple of days ago. And I haven't heard anything about that since. Is that NATO's plan just to blow up a nuclear plant? And uh, yeah, I wanted to ask uh, Truth Bear. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you Could if be. you remember the um, the the nerve uh, agent shot, the atrazine. Like when I was going through my uh, basic combat training unit, Alpha Three Ten Second Platoon. Shout out uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Black Sheep. Anyways. Um, uh, when we got to Blue Guide on there toward the end, we, we, of course, we were all given our fake little nerve shots to jab into the meaty part of your thigh. And we all had to memorize yeah. the 10 symptoms of a nerve attack. And, yeah. you know, me and my battle buddies, we were always like, bro, you know what I'm saying? If we get a nerve attack. This thing is probably to fucking kill us because we're probably dead. <laughs> 
But you know, anyway. Yeah. You remember yeah. all that shit? Oh yeah. You, you had you had the patch scene. I, I was on an aircraft carrier, so they had us do like the drill where we go to our battle station and they didn't even have the fake thing. They were like, if this was a real situation, there'd be atrazine here. And if you're, you know, if someone didn't get their gas mask on in time and they got hit with the, the weapon, then you'd have to hit them in the thigh with the atrazine. <laughs> Rob, what carrier were you on? The USS Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt, okay. <laughs> I did some time on that. I, I, I pre com the John C. Stennis. In '95. Wow, that yeah, uh, they, were, they were building that as I was getting out. I got out. Yeah, the they, they they put us they put they put some of us on the 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 GW. Um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, 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 the GW and the Roosevelt. Um, when our stuff was going to be built. One of my really close friends, Daniel Blanford from Marion County, Kentucky. He's uh, he's up to CPO now. Um, and oh, he started out as a regular seaman. He's worked his way all the way up to Chief Petty, and he's on the Reagan out there. Yeah. In, uh, good old meatball Sandy. flag land, Japan. Yeah. yeah, I was I was a senior chief. <laughs> Shout out, yeah. Daniel. If you can Big U of L man. Go Cardinals. And he's got a Japanese wife and kids and everything. And it's cool. He's like he's one of my redneck friends, and we can actually talk Japanese to each other. Oh, sick! Nice. Yeah. That would be an intre- Yeah, that'd be an interesting skit. Yeah, have both of y'all at like the Quickie Mart, you know, getting Slurpees in uh, Huntington, West Virginia, oh, yeah. talking yeah. Japanese <laughs> to each other. Yeah, <laughs> eating sushi. Ah, uh, he actually came back to uh, Marion County two or three years ago. I I wasn't down there at the time. I missed him, but I mean, he's he's been deployed and full-time cadre in the navy for well well i don't i've made mentions 15, before 20 but... years he's probably going to retire man. you know what yeah, I'm saying? I... he he joined the navy in 90 1994 94 okay he's been in the navy for 30 fucking years dude that's and, when i joined 94 yeah and and i don't I, I might i think i've mentioned this before but my wife's japanese so my children are Half Japanese, half Mexican, American. <laughs> so, so have you learned a little bit of the Nihongo? Nihongo Hanashimasuka? Si. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but so when I first, this was in night, this was in 99 when I first, or 2000, I'm sorry, 2000, uh, when I first went there. Um, so I learned words and phrases, but then my wife, who spoke Japanese or English, um, it kind of killed that desire. So over the years as we dated, I, and then I left Japan and came back to the States. Um, I stopped learning. Um, my kids are fluent. Um, my wife speaks with them uh, in Japanese, but um, I know words and phrases. Well, that's cool. My uh, my first babysitter uh, married to my mother's oldest brother, who was a Marine uh, at uh, Futenma in Okinawa. That's where he was stationed, but he ended up uh, marrying my uh, aunt Fumi Sawachi from Niigata Prefecture on Honshu, and she was my first babysitter. So when I was like two, three, four years old, I was always going to my aunt Fumi's, and of course, everyone's got to take their shoes off before you go in the door, and yep. she had the sliding wooden doors with paper and and NHK playing on the TV constantly, and you, you know, know so I, what... I got a couple of her books here that she gave me that are in, you know, um, from her uh, Marikari Noaza and her Reiki stuff, the divine. Oh, nice. All that nice. Stuff. She became a den mother to all the Japanese that came in and out of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And so in 1982, uh, when uh, Martha Lane Collins, who would go on to become the first female governor of Kentucky, when she was in negotiations with Toyota Automotive, uh, to build a Toyota plant in Kentucky. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the selling point was that my aunt Fumi would make all of the executives bento boxes. Oh, and cool. so they all came. Uh, nice. And the first place they went I would was take to my that aunt deal. Fumi's because yes. she has an entire yeah. shrine built next to her house. It's the only wow. shrine in all of Kentucky. Um, and so, and she makes all traditional Japanese bento and everything, you know, and, her Japanese restaurant so of course you know over the years you know 
unfortunately, unfortunately, she passed away about two years ago. But her daughter, my my first cousin, Mary, is keeping up the tradition. And so nice. there are huge gatherings of the Japanese all across Kentucky that all come to Fumi. Nice every year. What, um, you, know, you know, one thing I'll say is is um you brought up the, the car factory, and that brings me to that. It reminded me of that movie Gung Ho. Remember that movie Gung Ho, where yeah. where R- Michael Keaton Michael goes Keaton, to Japan. Yeah. Yeah, he comes back. Okay, but um, the other thing I was going to say was that um, one thing I thought was kind of strange. Now, this was whenever it was a either 2000, 2000 or 2001, I believe is when that movie uh, came out, Pearl Harbor, right, with Ben Affleck? Yeah. Um, it was one of those years, or it was right about that time, when I was still dating my my um, then-girlfriend, but my wife. Yeah. And um, one of the things that was really strange was that uh, – was that um, – we went to go see the movie, and the Japanese people are so polite and courteous. You know, she was, my wife was at that time apologizing to me, you know, because they show the horrific scenes. She's watching the movie of what the Japanese did to Pearl Harbor. And that's what the movie's about, right? The damage that was done to U.S. forces and, and whatnot, the sinking of the ships and stuff. The relationship she was, between yeah, so, black and his uh, woman. Yeah, so she was apologizing to me, and I thought that was strange. I was like, "You don't even apologize to me, like, you know." The, it, but the idea that that the Japanese are so courteous that even now, like, and, and what's been in the news just this last week was that uh, Hiroshima. It was either Nagasaki, Nagasaki or Hiroshima declined. I think it was Nagasaki declined to have the Israeli. Um, representative come to uh the national um the annual event for nagasaki for peace day because of what they're doing in palestine and uh-huh. it was a big it was a big deal and um and they stuck they stuck to their guns because you think that and uh, and i was listening to some guys talk about this i can't remember which podcast it was but they were talking about how funny it was is that they were declining the Israelis to come in there, but not the U.S. Who, who's in bed with these guys and caused a lot of this damage. So, uh, you mean the genocide that everybody can see, but they try to pretend that they don't say for fear yeah. of being called an anti-Semite? <laughs> yes, yes, and 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 what I just wanted to get, what I was really trying to get at was that the Japanese people they are the most polite, and um, I'm going to say for myself friendliest people that um even after all these years they still want to atone for something that they think that the world uh, you know I, I, not knowing the truth of of what actually took place we should apologize to them you know we should apologize to think we, we used like the, the the uh prototype bomb on two of their cities when they were ready to surrender and yeah you know, for some exactly and kick, they, you know, regardless of what the radiation, what anybody believes, it was a big fucking firebomb that leveled a big yeah. part of the city and in, in, in Tokyo too. Yeah, a and lot in Tokyo. of people died. Whether yeah. you believe yeah. in nuclear weapons or not, there was some sort of explosion that happened that killed a fuck ton of people because there Honestly, are still yo, living um, eyewitnesses to it. The, the Doolittle Raid on Tokyo and the firebombing of Tokyo and Kyoto actually killed more Japanese than Nagasaki. I, I mean, we're, we're basically uh, splitting uh, hairs for mass start. murder at this point when you're trying oh, to yeah. make that argument. Yeah. Oh, it, it's not an argument. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, when people think about the destruction in Japan, of course, Hiroshima and Nagasaki come to mind because that was the first use of well, nuclear shit. weaponry. We firebombed Dresden. But, we uh, firebombed you know, a lot of cities. Um, yeah. Of course, it, it would be notable Probably to do point it again, out too. that the uh, occupation of China making the Japanese province Philadelphia of Manchuko, might deserve it. the Japanese occupation saying. of Korea, um, the antics of Tojo, the, uh, what the uh, Japanese did to prisoners of war, like with the building of the bridge over River Kwai. And I know from my own personal interaction with countless um, Nihon Jin or Japanese nationals. Um, their culture is very, very um, monochromatic and that's by design and uh, any 
foreign influence, any foreigner of any kind uh, receives the term gaijin, mm -hmm. gaijin, which is yeah. uh, foreigner or stranger or alien or something. And there, there is very, 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 very much uh, disambiguation between Japanese and non-Japanese. And, and it differs yeah. amongst parts of Japan. But like, for example, if you're Ainu indigenous up in Hokkaido near Sapporo or if you're dark skinned, short Okinawan, you'll receive racism when you go to like Kyoto or Tokyo. I mean, yeah, so, so it's racism's everywhere. I, I, I've got a little something here. I, every yeah. country that gets conquered by the United States neuters the fucking male population. And look what's happening in Japan now. They can't even maintain, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. a positive Ooh. birth rate. Yeah. Guess what, you Rob? Know. Neither can we. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we're, we're a defeated communist country right now. I, I, you know, as this stupid fake election De facto, yeah. Yeah. has been yeah. going on, I like, you know, with the fake fucking Trump getting shot in a year with a pellet or whatever the fuck it was, who cares? I, I don't even care what happened, but the fact that he's a 78 year old lunatic up there fucking ranting and raving stupid shit. And they're, they're like propping Kamala up as this fucking fake that she never was. She's always been a fucking lunatic who will start cackling like a fucking hyena. Anytime you ask her a question where she doesn't have a script to read off of like, it, it's so fucking comical and clownish. I, I'm wondering, like, the, the the idiots who fucking support these parties, no matter what, who uh, were, like, out there in force when she was the unelected representative for the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. that anybody who opposed her, whether they were a woman or a fucking man, was a misogynist, mm -hmm. um, if you opposed oh, her. Right. And, and, and You're a racist, racist yeah. If like, you don't vote for Kamala, you're racist. That's, you know, we that's what's going to come that down to. Last night, the, the fucking... Like, like, the, I, don't, I don't know if this is reality because I don't interact with that many people, but like, is the mainstream fucking narrative that everybody who disagrees with that bullshit is a fucking racist, misogynist, who doesn't support this fucking moron, who, yeah. like, if you look at any of her past appearances on any kind of recorded media is a fucking moron yeah. and yeah. Wh wh whether it's the speech writers who are trying to portray her as a moron or if it's her freestyle and being a moron it doesn't make a fucking difference yeah i think I, she's I just, just doing push back on something that time. rob said earlier rob said that that we cannot maintain the birth rate and so uh, I, I have proof right yeah. here one of right. my eight, Yona, Yona one of my eight the birth children for all of us uh, speak for yourself you're a buddy. champion dude you're a champion I mean, I overproduced. Me and my ex had three kids, so there you go. We, like, fucking broke the birth rate. So fuck you, know, you too. <laughs> you know one thing. I, uh, you know thing Procreator, one thing I, the Yona. Yeah, you know one thing I did want to say was so in as and this is I know from two thousand and two thousand and one because that's when I was there in Japan and I was down in the Nagasaki province, okay, uh, in Sasebo, okay, and I was at the base in Sasebo. Now outside the base in Sasebo, there's this really small little city, okay. It's not like Tokyo or, or these bigger, bigger or Okazaka or Osaka or, or these bigger cities. Um, but the city was split. I kid you not. It was split in what they called Sailor Town and Saki Town. All Americans could go into Sailor Town, but they could not go into Saki Town. And if you went into any and it was split down the middle of this one street. And if you went into a, an establishment in Saki Town, they would give you one of these numbers like this. And this was saying no Americans allowed. And that was, um, I, I made some friends with some Japanese that would take me into these, some of these establishments and they would let me come in because I was with the Japanese. But there was, uh, even when I went back in 2018, there was still some remnants of, not, not so much, but there was still some remnants of, this is, you can't come here, Saki Town and Sailor Town. And they didn't, they didn't want U.S. patronages there. That's wild. It's kind of like that on the res. You know, there's areas where tourists are welcome, and then there's other areas where uh, they're not welcome. And yeah. 
you shouldn't go there. Uh, but I mean, it's you know, there's pretty much just basically a little strip of you know the fast food joints and the casino and the museum of the Native American Indian, and then that's it. And pretty much everywhere else is kind of off limits, but you don't really have to worry about straggling tours. Most tourists don't want to take pictures with you. They just want to take pictures of you like you're uh, in a human zoo or something. It's kind of weird. Yeah. You're an exhibit. You're a specimen. It was very generous of the U.S. government to give, um, you know, deserted, unformable uh, lands to all the Indian tribes. Uh. Well, I mean, Israel did the same thing to the Palestinians, and they yeah. gave them the Gaza Strip. I mean, yeah. it's kindness on well, the part well, of the Well, well, I hear, if I hear one of those idiots, if I hear one of those idiots by yeah. their genocide saying Hamas, <laughs> like... <laughs> You know, I was listening to that. I was I was actually watched this show several nights ago. I rewatched the show, uh, The Outlaw Josie Wales. And you remember when he first meets up with the chief? And oh, Tim Bears. Tim Bears. Or not Tim Bears. Um, it was uh, the chief. Yeah. And oh, oh, like, the, oh, the chief that, that tags along yeah. with him. Yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, we've become so civilized, you know. And he's and he first sneaks up on Josie Wales and pulls a gun to him. And then they have this conversation where um, Josie Wales just tells him, like, I'm not with these guys. And he walks off and he's just like, the the chief was talking about how they were um, uh, exploited by the Americans. And he's just like, well, I guess, and, and Josie Whale says, I guess we can't trust the white man. And then he says, then that's when he realizes like, yeah, you know what? You can't trust the white man. <laughs> that's yeah. a great movie. I, I really like the end when uh, Josie Wales and 10 bears make their pack. And then he yeah. goes and he defends the homestead. And, and it's a great lesson to all Americans to um, properly maintain, clean, and zero your firearms. Anyway. Yes. And, and, and when, when, when Josie Wills goes to meet Ten Bears. Powder dry. When, yeah. When Josie yeah. Wills goes to meet Ten Bears, he tells him his, his basically, he lays it out. He says, like, hey, I'm offering you life. You're offering me life. I offer you death if you offer me death. And then Ten Bears says, he says, your words have iron. He says, paper yep. cannot... You, you speak words of iron. You speak words of iron. Paper cannot hold the iron. The iron must come from men. And he says, therefore, it is life. That's what he tells Josie Wales. Blammo. Yep. I know that speech well. Yeah. I've watched that movie about 10 times at least. I have I not know. watched it enough, apparently. That's, that's I love Black Clint with Westerns. Wow. And you, and you gotta love an old western where even even the women and the girls are all firing up the muskets. Hell yeah! Oh, muskets yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude! <laughs> I mean, our yeah. society is a polite society. That's what I, I believe. He was a rapist in one of his uh, old western movies, but uh, yeah, he was. Uh, uh, high Desert Plains times, Drifter, right? The, the, high High uh, High Plains yeah. Drifter. Yeah, High Plains Drifter. Yeah, that was his wife at the time, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. She came out in several of his movies. Um, Man, I, I'm a big uh, Clint Eastwood Western fan. Gotcha. So, so is that how you guys are handling the global emergency? You're just watching <laughs> Westerns? I'll be right back. Yeah. To learn truth? Yeah, they're speaking a lot of truth in these movies, right? No, no, no. Uh, I mean, I mean our, our, new, uh, our new global emergency. Oh. You, yeah. you, guys, you guys know, right? We're, we're under, uh, we're like, we're almost at pandemic time again. I'm pretty monkey sure. Pox, right? monkey pox. Yeah, yeah, pretty money sure pox. If uh, you don't let anybody stick their dick in your ass, you're probably really <laughs> good. But I mean, maybe I'm minimizing the the threat to the whole world. I don't know. I saw some rather scary looking videos on CNN, uh, and I was rather concerned uh, that CNN was was trying to dupe their uh, their audience. Did they have yeah. numbers on the freaking screen so you could see the running? Not count? yet. No, graph, they haven't. They have not put the counter up yet. But uh, I have a feeling that's coming. That's probably coming. I, well, you know, you, I, I mean, I they haven't officially declared a pandemic yet, right? It's just an emergency situation right now. It's a global remember, emergency. I don't remember what pharmaceutical company they were even attributed to, but they had ten million doses that were ready to spin up. Just oh yeah, in case. yeah, they're ready to go, man. Well, you know, well, it's the new platform. 
You know, it's uh, it's beautiful. It's like you don't have to take uh, 12 years to develop a vaccine anymore. You can do it in 72 hours now. Yeah. Well, you, you know, the funny thing is, science is, works. is I remember last year here in Florida, they were pumping that monkeypox nonsense. And they even had on, I was even watching the local news and they were going to and again, they were targeting the gay population. But they were going to gay individuals and they were like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to get on the wait list because there's such a demand for the monkeypox vaccine. And it was just like it was. And and again, I was going to an alternative medicine school at the time. But even still, they were like, oh, did you hear monkeypox is on the rise again? It's just like, man, come on. And come ladies, on. And any ladies listen, if there's a guy who's more interested in your asshole than your person, then. <laughs> Chances are that you could get the monkey pox too. That's right. Yeah. Listen to Rob's advice, ladies. He won't steer you wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Say no to the poop hole. Say no to the poop hole. <laughs> so, so what happens? Because I don't, I don't see this. Like they're gonna have to force this on people. Right, because I mean, bird flu is the, not doing well, anything. Like they tried well, so hard with bird flu, COVID and it just the, went COVID nowhere. Was the enemy, though, it was the invisible PCR created enemy, at, and the flu disappeared. But like fucking monkey, pox, but they went too far the first time. They I, went I too far with the first one. The population's like just fuck off. What are they going to spray fucking cities so everybody has a bunch of fucking? The, well, they were stores. doing that in China. There was a there was a story actually that I heard from from the Olympics that came on that was a runner and and um, he had run I think the two hundred and the one hundred and I think he he uh, maybe got third in the one hundred but he won the two hundred from Africa okay and they were highlighting him on one of the uh, news networks and. In that story, they said that he claimed to have gotten COVID two days before he ran his uh, gold-winning uh, Olympic race. Right. And I think about that. It's like, okay, you got COVID two days before? What happens if you just tested? Remember what happens if you just tested positive? They would lock you up for 14 days in quarantine just for testing positive, not even having right. symptoms or anything. Well, and then COVID, he's running a race two yeah. days later. Yeah. So is COVID then not considered a performance enhancing uh, substance? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was COVID. Yeah. He's yeah. high on COVID. I, I think we should start a uh, petition to get that gold medal removed. I think we should. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. I think he is an illegitimate champion. And contact trace all of those that were involved in the race, right? Contract trace all of them because they ran right next oh, to him. Oh, don't worry. Within government's already doing that. That's yeah. fine. We don't have to worry contact about that. Trace. They're all on top of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is how I know that social unrest is on its way because nobody's ever done anything about that stupid fucking COVID thing. There's so many people <laughs> who deserve to fucking pay the ultimate price, whatever you believe that is. But the fucking liars in the media, the government, um, now, now we got every, just about every 538 uh, Congress people and 100 senators. What is there like fucking maybe you can count on one hand how many of them aren't sucking Israel's dick and allowing this genocide to go on, paying billions of fucking I don't dollars. think you even need that entire hand. No, I, I don't think you do. Yeah. Billions of fucking dollars. One wow, finger. Like I know you need one finger. People have yeah. people have fucking homeless problems and like no clean drinking water in the cities and fucking roads that aren't drivable all over the fucking country. And these yeah. cocksuckers just keep rubbing it in everybody's fucking faces and giving money to Israel while they fucking murder fucking women and children. Mm -hmm. like, For real. You know, you know, uh, maybe several years ago, several years ago, it was in 2019. Um, um, well, I had a friend. I, I had a friend, and I've known this guy since like 2013. Um, and then we touched base again, 2019, I think. And he was living up in Maryland, where I was at, at the time. I was stationed in Maryland at the time, and he was up there in D.C. And so I went to go see him in D.C. We had a great time, just catching up. 
But one of the things he said was that he was married. And I said, oh, congratulations and stuff. And he said, I said, what, is your, what does your wife do? And I didn't think about it at the time because I was still, I wasn't awoke yet in 2019. I was still in slumber. And one of the things that he said was, he's like, oh, my wife's a lobbyist. I said, a lobbyist? I was like, oh, what, you know, what, is she, what does she do? And he's like, she's a lobbyist for the Israeli, uh, she's an Israeli, an Israeli lobbyist. And huh. I didn't think about it at the time, but he and I spoke huh. maybe about two years ago. And we talked a little bit about some stuff. And that was when, when more or less COVID was really big. And just in talking to him, I could tell that there were things that I was saying, even just about the COVID stuff, that he just did not want to hear. He was bought into all of it. And um, um, and at that time, by that time, I was already listening to Ryan Christian. And Ryan Christian was putting so much stuff about the atrocities the Israelis were doing for decades. And I was oh, yeah. this newly been going coming on into a that. Long time. Long yeah, and I was time. new. And because I was it's... new. Yeah, I was yeah, new into 60, that. And, 60 uh, and censorship tags and yeah. uh, being sued by a bunch of people for a bunch of frivolous bullshit lawsuits. Yeah, and, and I was I was new into that at that time. So I didn't feel comfortable enough at that time to ask my friend, like, hey, do you know this stuff about what the actual nation is actually doing? Like like and and I, I didn't feel comfortable because we were still friends. I was still coming into the enlightenment of where I'm at now. Um, but I, I always go back and remember his wife was an Israeli lobbyist. And I think, man, I can't believe it. Well, there's a lot of books um, about the real history of the world and this country that are meticulously documented. <laughs> and nobody's ever asked to read those books. They give you a bunch of bullshit when you're in school. So mm -hmm. just goes to show you they don't want the general populace to know they want you to you know plug into the either the hollywood or the entertainment or yeah. you know the modern gladiator games whatever sport you're interested in that you played when you were young just to keep you away and keep you believing people like joe biden or donald trump are actually fucking doing anything it's, you know here here's a thought here's a thought so a couple of nights ago, I watched that movie, 12 Years a Slave, and I'd never seen it before. I just watched it just a few nights ago. Now, one of the things that obviously we know slavery was was horrible, and it's the story about this guy who was is uh, kidnapped. Slavery yeah, yes. is horrible. Yes, yes, absolutely. And um, But the story goes back to when this um, black individual, individual free man was uh, kidnapped from the north, brought down to the south, and he was... 12 years a slave and he finally moved back up to um being a free free status and one of the things that he came across was th they would always tell him don't tell uh the white men your uh social status from before like don't tell them that you're learned because then they would really beat you and when he would find in the movie and i don't want to not, not not too big of a spoiler but when he would meet individuals that seemed like they were sympathetic to his cause and his intellect, um, uh, they would say, "Oh, this is this is too much for me. I, I can't I can't handle this information." And it was like they just dismissed it. And I, when I saw that in the movie, I I see that's what's going on now. Is that is that to say something against Israel? is so taboo that people don't want to I, I can't say anything against that when you talk to christian folk and they say hey man do you know what israel is doing that you're saying this is god's chosen people and you're rooting for them like and they're like i i don't want to i don't want to talk about that like it was taboo just as it was back then hmm? it's disgusting well they just primaried somebody who was already a communist but a communist who didn't stand with israel and got primary one of the squad yeah i'm trying to was it cory bush yeah yeah cory yeah. bush yeah uh, not that i'm sad to, to see her ass go but you know i mean it's just are like they a, gonna, are they gonna they, do that to sandy 
I mean, if for any other reason, I mean, there's a, you know, probably at least 50 reasons you could call this whole government of ours illegitimate from what it was founded as. But uh, the fact that we have a foreign country that has a political action committee that has handlers for pretty much every congressperson and senator, we're a captured country and like, who knows? What is the fucking power structure of this fucking silly oligarchy we live in? I'm pretty sure well, it's, it's the, the banks. The banks the sit at the top yeah. of everything. Yeah. No, well, the banks I mean, sit above the corporations. The yeah, banks okay, tell the yeah, corporations yeah, yeah, what yeah, to yeah. do. Yep, yep, you, yep, you had the robber barons who made like unfathomable wealth and yeah. made these. They're the ones who own the banks. Yeah, the charitable foundations that aren't uh-huh. charitable that just continue to make money and influence policies. and Yeah, because the robber barons never went away. They just, they invented new industries to monopolize. Yeah. Well, they, they said monopoly and uh, they were fully split up and made their profits, you know, quadruple at least, yeah. maybe tenfold. And then they had this idea that they could do this on all these other countries and the Bolshevik revolution is a good example, how they uh, tried to finance that whole crazy communist movement. We're we're about to watch another one. Well, you know, you know, (laughs) here's a a thought. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I wasn't sure until like, I, I I saw like what fucking Trump's been doing since the fake assassination attempt. Dude, like, as soon as I started seeing the campaign propaganda, I was like, oh, Lord, here we go. Not this needs for, to be documented. They're not yeah. waiting for Gavin Newsom. They're going fucking balls to the wall with Kamala. They're, they're doing a Hail Mary with Kamala is what they're doing. Yeah. And you know what? Everybody, they... everybody knows what she is, man. Judge Joe Brown told you what Kamala is. And yeah, nobody yeah. <laughs> has argued with him. Nobody and, and, has yeah. tried to tell him different. And Trump has made himself as toxic as Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Just, well, just yeah. doing the plan. Yeah. Just, just like that happened. And, you know, here's one thought. I want to throw this out. Because earlier tonight on the third rail, um, they were talking with Mac, Max Egan and, um, and Steve. They were talking about uh, energy, right? And so... One of the things that Driz mentioned was the the bankers. They're running they're running the show. Okay, it's not so much the corporations, it's the bankers. Okay, well the resources, right? Okay, so if if it was all just banking and currency, people by themselves could figure out how to uh, do commerce just within the local community. Okay, but so we can figure that stuff out. But what is it that we need? We need resources. We need energy resources. And so when the bankers control the energy resources, and that's what's been a cult from us is like all this free energy, this free resources from water and oil that's naturally in the ground. Anybody can just drig a, you know, dig a well into uh, their, their yard and, and, and uh, hit a deposit, and they got free water. And imagine if you had free energy. It's the resource of how they're controlling us. And these bankers got a monopoly yeah. on that. There's three ways you control a population. Information, energy, and food. Yes. If you can control those three things, you can control any population. Yes. Well, the ruling, the ruling class is trying to portray the world as a world of scarcity. And mm-hmm. it's a world of plenty and renewable stuff. There's, there's no need to fucking keep digging up fucking coal and pumping out oil and natural gas. There, there's other things that many people have discovered that they just won't allow to come out into the mainstream. There's, there's nothing short of a revolution that's going to save this shit. There ain't no fucking voting your way out. There's no... Uh, reasoning with a bunch of fucking lunatics because people are very easily propagandized the the whole um i I guess the the whole zeitgeist is programmed to teach you and at least in this country that some american fake supremacy over the world that uh died in the 50s (laughs) at least 
Well, that was that was the the narrative that our parents got, right? The baby boomers. They got the uh, the picturesque American dream, nineteen fifties white picket fence reality. Right? Well, they want one income with a stay at home parent, and well, yeah, because a hundred years ago, a brand new house cost you five thousand dollars, Rob. Yeah, you could yeah. put your whole you know your whole family through college have multiple cars for the family yeah, and go working at the factory. Yeah. At a, at a simple factory job. Yeah. But which was actually like Henry Ford's design. And then they tore that down slowly over time as well. Well, he was a Nazi. So, I yeah. mean, <laughs> yeah, but the, the story that we were fed, by our parents of the the world that we were born into yeah. might have been true at the time that they were young, you know, and becoming adults and, and, yeah. you know, building lives and, and whatever. The ignorance. But ignorance. by the time we got to like the seventies and, and like the real deep rot started setting in. Yeah. 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 Like, that world was gone. Yeah. And it didn't take long either. Cause by the time you get to the eighties and everything's fucking like electric charged and fucking yeah, just, yeah. well, I mean, that was a lot of cocaine, but like the, the seventies <laughs> the, 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 the was the whole club of Rome limits to growth. And we need a population bomb. Population. That's what I'm saying is that the eighties is when they actually started the campaign for all of that shit slowly getting us used to the idea that we need to call ourselves yes because we're the problem yeah terrorism is on the rise right yeah and then they uh morph that into climate now now first it was global warming and then as some like ironic twist, every time they'd have a conference, there'd be some unseen. Well, technically it, first it was, uh, we were, we were heading into a new ice age and then it was global warming. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, well in the eighties, wasn't it? The eighties was the ozone. Yeah. Like, the ozone right? hole. Yeah. Which well, magically repaired itself, yeah, which apparently up. the ozone hole, uh, the ozone layer does like at random yeah. times, it'll develop a hole and then it'll just seal it up. Well, in, you know, the, in the 70s, I remember as a kid that, the, you know, on the, at least in New Jersey on the East Coast, the winters were so cold that, like, the Delaware Bay froze up at one point. So wow. that's when they were talking about that whole Ice Age thing. Hmm. Yeah, you know, the um, one thing that's funny, and it was actually really profound, is that my son had told me this maybe about a year ago. He you know, as I, was, as I was slowly introducing him because he started school and was learning about history and stuff. So I started talking to him some stuff about history and um, I was starting to introduce him to some of these ideas. Um, one of the things that he said that was really profound to me, he asked me, he said, hey, Papa, he's like, would you rather live now or would you rather live back in, you know, in the 50s and 60s? And I said, you know what? I would rather live now because back in those days, like you were talking about, the, the the American dream of white picket fences. I was like, that only lasted so long. And I wouldn't want to live my life in deception. I'd rather know the truth and to go through this now than to have come decades believing a lie, you know? I don't know. They they told us Generation Xers that we were hopeless and there was no future for us because all the factory jobs were gone and there was really nothing for you to like. Well, first they promised us flying cars, and then they <laughs> told us there were no jobs for. It. Yeah, and then all of a sudden the technology, the information technology, at least every, everything else didn't develop. Everything else was just like Dwight Eisenhower said it would be. Instead of like the people tinkering in their garages, creating shit, it all became big government funded projects of fucking limited growth. Yeah. Well, imagine what changed all that stuff. What, it was the coming of age of the internet. I remember when the internet was in, I, I'm on, I want to say 96, I could be wrong, maybe 97, when it was called the World Wide Web. 
and unless you had a computer, you couldn't get on, right? And it was like just, I thought it was just sending an email. I was still in the Navy at the time, and it was just like, oh, now you can send an email and not have to write something. I was like, wow, that's awesome. But that was the beginning, what brought us into this age of the World Wide Web, you know, uh, um, sending tech, text messages to through uh, pagers and being able to text and talk. And then I remember it was really rapidly when the phones started coming in. Now you could have, everybody had a cellular. And then it was, you know, I, I didn't have a smartphone until 2007, but... Oh, yeah. What was it, 2006 when the smartphones came out where you can actually have this stuff in your palm? Wow, how fast that came about, right? I was still, you know, when I was a kid, I was still amazed by Atari and being able to play video games on my TV. <laughs> and then 10 years later, you're like, boom, you got it in your hand, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and it's made people's attention span shorter and makes their memory worse because they rely on a computer to tell them stuff that they should already know. Well, it's, Remember that? it's not only that, it's used to deliver programming to you. Yes. I, I yes. don't, I don't believe Every that individual. the vast majority of the population understand uh, what, what they're actually spending the majority of their day interacting with. And, and yeah. why I tried not to touch mine as, as much as humanly possible. Same here. Same here. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Ba back it's a to, fucking Skinner box. Ba back to, back to Ryan Christian. Like that dude, like not only does he post all the sources of what he's talking about, but he's annoyingly objective to the point that he <laughs> won't accept anything that he doesn't, he can't prove for a fact. He doesn't accept anything. And they've put 60 different security filter tags on social media on him. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he just talked about that. He's, he's, he's going to switch over to the, um, man, I can't, I'm forgetting the guy's name, but uh, he had him on his show uh, this past couple of weeks about um, the, the new, uh, not encrypted, but um, the new um, phone and computer uh, setup that they're doing to combat this stuff with, uh, um, you, do you know, do you know, do you know what I'm talking about? Driz? I don't, um, well, there, there's, there, there's a, there's like a new, uh, uh, it, it, guys associated with the uh, Derek bros. Uh -huh. They've set up a, a new uh, computer system and a phone system to where you can talk yeah, kind of encryptedly. Um, and, and, and Ryan was saying, I got to get on that. I'm going to get on that. And, and the guy's helping him to get on that. And Ryan was pushing it uh, over this past week. Yeah. It's a good, a good interview. I, I, I got to look that interview up. But uh, that, 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 that's just like to, to prove a point. Like he, he could either be a um, Democratic shell or a Republican shell. And Ryan? No, I, I, I'm saying like if he, you know, chose to just instead of going to truth, he went to money. And he could pick either one of those sides with all his followers and lead them all into that, at least the ones who have no discernment. But, uh, and he would never have any of these problems. But telling the truth in this country at the current climate is equated to domestic terrorism. And people should be really fucking concerned about that. But they're not. Yeah. Yeah. People should be concerned about a lot of things that they don't really seem to give a shit about. Seems to be yeah, the American way. Well, you know, work and pay fucking, you know, 40% of your fucking money after all is said and done with your uh, wage taxes and your fucking property taxes and tolls and, you know, grocery taxes, everything you fucking pay. Most people pay at least fifty percent or more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, the hard thing is you forgot is, sales is, tax. Yeah, sales tax. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, the hard thing is, is that, um, is that um, uh, these 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 taxes and these monies that we're paying is that, um, uh, um, I'm sorry, I just lost my thought. Um, I'll I'll come back to it. I'm sorry, I lost my thought. All right. 
Uh, I was lost in a, in a comment on the live stream chat. What do you got, Rob? Uh, we're talking about right? phones. It caught my attention. Okay. More Go ahead. Yeah. So that's what I was, that, that's what I was going to say was that, is that we, we've been dumbed down to this, to this belief that, well, what I'm doing isn't th these external things that are happening outside in this, in the worldview don't affect me. I'm still going, I still got to buy milk for my kids. I still got to go to school. I still got to take the kids to school. I still got to pay taxes. They, they think that it doesn't affect them. Um, and that's kind of slowly how they work this stuff into us is that we just don't notice it. Um, but like even today, I went to the store to buy some chicken wings. I want to have chicken wings tomorrow night when I watch the UFC fights. And I noticed that they were two dollars more. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, oh, oh, the overall price was two dollars more per pound that I pay about about a month ago. Yep. And it's these small little little rises, you know. And if and this is like, why is it rising? And we don't think about that. Be like, well, I still got to buy milk, but why are you paying so much more for milk? It, it's these little, it's it's all of these things that we're talking about that lead to this. So it does matter. We have to pay attention. We have to look at who we're putting in as our representatives into the Congress and what we so-called call representation of government, right? I don't know. They're going to try to move everybody into cities, um, cause a whole bunch of, I guess, uh, scarcity. I think, like um, I think we have in the next, uh, I'd say about 16 months or so, not quite a year and a half uh, left. We, we're all already starting to see some of the effects around the world. Um, there's going to be an increase in... Uh, like weather related phenomenon, geological phenomenon, tectonic yeah, phenomenon. I think, so, um, I think there's gonna be a I, thing. I think that's gonna do some of the work for them because there there are going to be effects felt around around the planet. Um they might know more specifics than what we do about what the fuck to expect, but uh, I mean, based would, on what's been happening so far, you know, we're just going right into this uh, formation that's happening in the outer solar system, and we're yeah. already seeing wild shit. Well, here, here's a thought. Here's a thought. So today, um, I talked with one of my investors. Okay, he he's helping with some of my investments, mm -hmm. and I got a small little investment, and um, I was actually talking with uh, Tony Arterburn because I want to maybe buy some gold and silver. So I was thinking about moving some assets into gold and silver. And I wanted to talk to uh, my investor today. And when I was talking to him about some of the stuff and why I wanted to do this stuff, he, he, he just kept telling me, he's like, Hey, you know, this and that, and, and, and stocks and bonds. And this is a good, this is a good uh, investment for you. It's safe. And you this could and not that. pay me to be in the stock market right now. Yeah, so I was telling him, I was like, well, I was so I was ask, I was asking him the questions, and he kept telling me some stuff. And one of the things I said to him, I said, well, I said he asked me one of the reasons was like why I want to do this, and I said, well, because um, I've heard from the, you know, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, the big bankers themselves saying that by 2025 they want to go to digital currency, and you know, also you know with the last year with the um, launch of the Fed coin and listening to Whitney Webb and, and all these uh, smart people, I was like, I, I don't see this, the fiat currency lasting much longer. So it's going to go somewhere. So I want some things, some tangible. And he, he just kept kind of like, not, I'm not going to say gaslighting me, but he was telling me some stuff that was just all along the same narrative. And I thought to myself, well, I'm not saying this. This isn't a conspiracy of mine. They said it. <laughs> they they said they want to do this. Like, um, you, you know, uh, it's not me saying this. It's it's them, and they're saying they want to do this by a certain time. Like, 
I just want to make sure I'm prepared, I guess. What are your thoughts, I guess, for investments wise, I guess? <laughs> have food ready, have uh, weapons and ammunition to protect that food and keep yourself in all the markets if you have the ability. Yeah. Like there, there's, uh, I'm sure. Continue uh, to look for opportunity. Continue yeah. to look for smart investments. Because that's, like, that's the beautiful thing about hard. unstable markets is they present a multitude of opportunities for a shrewd investor. But if you just go throwing your money into anything that you think is a good idea, you're probably going to end up broken dead soon. Yeah. Well, that's one thing he was telling me was because I was, I was talking to him about gold and silver and I said, I, I mentioned to him, I wanted to have the physical asset. I want to have at least some in a physical asset. And, he, and he was, he was, he was really just kind of like uh, dissuading me from doing that. I thought to myself like, well, isn't that putting, you know, I'm diversifying my eggs, right? Like I'm trying to, because what if it does, right? I'm How many have times something? have the governments come for your gold? Yeah. Once in the last hundred years that I can think of. One too many times, right? I would say so. So yeah. ha having physical gold or a certificate saying you have gold that you don't really physically possess isn't worth shit if um you know there's yeah, a the same thing as having Bitcoin on Coinbase. You don't yeah. own it. Exactly. What's the value, right? What's the but, value? You know. so it's not about what the value it's it, what's the chain of possession that's okay. the important okay. part okay you give yeah. me a paper certificate that says i own gold that's fine that can burn up in a fire that can get lost somebody can eat it yeah yeah but if i actually have <laughs> a physical it. ingot you're gonna have yeah. to kill me to get that yeah 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 and if uh there is no money value say that big earthquake comes and throws everything into chaos what the fuck is that gold ingot going to do you if you don't have something to eat <laughs> well it's true because it doesn't make a very good yeah. hammer yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too soft. it's too soft yeah yeah i mean it's yeah. really those those types of investments and again uh, Liberty Radio is for entertainment purposes only. This is not investment advice. Uh, but precious metals are going to be for the restructuring time, right? Mm, okay. uh, once the chaos is over. Okay. Because yeah, that's, okay. that's what you have the food and the ammunition for. Uh, and, and yeah. hopefully generators and fuel and you're out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Mm as far away from a uh, metropolitan area as you can possibly be, that's going to be the best place to be if things actually fully collapse, which I don't believe that they will. Um, but here. Yeah. the precious metals are for after all that shit dies down and human beings start reorganizing again and they start getting markets running again, whatever that looks like, there are still going to be physical stores of value. Gold yeah. has always been one in the yes. entire okay, yes. history of humanity yes. not to mention the fact that gold just hit its record high within the last 24 hours well, well think about this too Driz. like like um so let's just say a collapse happens and mm. there's a period of time where things are in array right things are in chaos things are in array what what is a value right it's capability it's resources hmm. so locally you know can can you do something can you produce something can you provide something and then in order to bring some things to market or to to you know for currency those that have a physical asset say gold and silver in whatever um form it, it is they're going to have something that they can reestablish a currency base. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I off on that? So unless you have an actual capability or resource, you got to have something that, that we're going to say cross state, 
cross country, cross, cross bound, uh, borders, you're going to be able to say, I can exchange this for that. Is it, is that not well, yeah, something that, that that's again, you have to have a system of commerce in order for that gold to become valuable again. Yes. Cause if, if we're just going back to, you know, like hunter gatherer times and food is your most important resource or shelter is your most important resource then your gold again is essentially worthless. Um, yeah. But again, I don't, I don't see a full collapse happening because we've been through currency resets before and we've not had like, you know, Mad Max type conditions. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, the ultimate goal is to bring everybody down to a third world level of living style. Correct. It's called it's equity, that- Rob. It's not, it's not to elevate everybody to first world status. Yeah. So anybody's got that crazy idea in their head. Yeah. Form you into like cities and uh, take all the uh, natural resources for the rich that are already rich that are setting this whole bullshit system up for you. Oh, speaking of, and- did you, did you hear that uh, presidential hopeful Donald John Trump once he becomes president next year in 2025, he wants to charter 10 brand new uh, smart cities in America uh, so that America can be uh, fully, um, I don't know, integrated with the, uh, the biodigital convergence that they, they keep trying to force on us. I bet he thought of that all himself. Oh, yeah. He thought about he thought about all he has himself. he i'm telling you truth bearer he has the best ideas yes like they're they're just the hugest ideas uh you cannot even believe how immense these ideas are yeah he's good yeah haven't they already been doing this for like the last at least 10 years building these corporate cities out in um nowhere land where no people are living yeah, but what they're looking at doing now is and and they're they're fairly well along the path is getting the local and state laws changed so that corporations can once again own and operate mun- municipalities. So they they can like buy up the land, put in all the infrastructure, the homes, the shops, the uh, the transportation, public transportation, whatever, whatever's that, needed in the development. And, uh, you know, idea, people right? just, yeah, they, they work and live and uh, they're basically owned by the corporation. Aren't we all corporate slaves? The ones that, the one of... <laughs> I I try not to be as much as possible. Some ways it's unavoidable because I'm a fucking hermit and uh, I hate being around other people. So at some point the corporation becomes necessary for the needs of daily life, you know, (laughs) but I try to stay as far away from it as possible. Plus I enjoy electricity and the interwebs, you know, those are corporation provided. Yeah, and as soon as you stop drawing that from the local electric company and figure out your own way, I'm afraid you're not going to be on the air anymore. Well, I'm <laughs> building building a Tesla coil out back. So. Well, Everything goes according to plan. Another six months, we shouldn't have to be on the grid anymore. I mean, that neighborhood of trees. I'm joking. Had- I'm joking, guys. Don't raid the fucking house. Come on. <laughs> The, the neighbor who had the tree hanging over your yard, it wouldn't be bad to ground your Tesla coil. In his <laughs> I'll, I'll put it in his backyard. That's what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> be peeking through the blinds as the FBI breaks his door down. Yeah, all right, motherfucker. Didn't want to pay for my roof. Well, glad the hurricane didn't wipe it out for you. I'm glad it didn't either, Rob. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I was I was quite concerned. Yona can attest to that if he ever comes back on, which I don't think he will. I think Yona's pretty much gone for the night. I see dark screen. I saw I saw Yo, Yona Youngins running in. So he's got to take care of his responsibilities. Yeah. 
Well, and he's got his hands full there too. I'm I'm actually amazed he's able to spend as much time on the air as he is. <clears throat> he's got a lot going on. So so what's your latest outrage? My latest outrage? <laughs> I don't really get outraged anymore. I don't. Like, nothing really pushes my buttons. I mean, other than the asshole neighbor. But that's that's just shit you, you, you deal with when you live around other people, you know? Like, that's, that's nothing out of the ordinary. You know, I, I try not to, but uh, this whole imminent communist takeover of everything... Yeah. It's really starting to like bother me. Watching this, you know, fake fake cult of personality that they're building around Kamala Harris, and now now Trump's the old guy who's unhinged, saying all these fucking, you know, it wasn't bad enough that he had half the people already hating him because he's a pro wrestling Hall of Fame bad guy, but. Now he's like starting to make the people who were like, you know, on the fence start to switch over to this whole communist fucking yeah. ideology. They're talking about taking away assault rifles. And mm -hmm. I, I just uh, was watching the Y files on YouTube when I was eating my lunch today. And I saw some commercial from some parent from Sandy Hook. And I immediately stopped the, and turned it off. So I can't even tell you what the fuck the commercial was, but I saw that as like the little, you know, text on the screen. Mm -hmm. Andy Hook. Well, Driz, like, wow. didn't you say, yeah, Driz, did you say earlier you're, you're in the market for a firearm? I am. I am actually yeah, in better, the market better, for better a Better buy one soon. Better buy one soon. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're working on it, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, the the laws in uh, Texas are favorable for firearm ownership as long as you are not disqualified um, yeah. under any you know normal disqualif disqualifying yeah. events. Well, that's that's the whole tricky thing about the communist takeover. Like they've been trying to centralize everything into mm -hmm. you know Washington D.C., but the fact of the matter is, it's the United States of America. So so I mean, how are you how are you going to mind fuck the entire state of Texas into communism? I don't think it's going to happen. I don't. Yeah. I I think I think if they do end up going full commie, Texas is going to be like fuck you. We're seceding. Yeah. Bye. Well, yeah. We're our own country now. We have we have our yeah. own energy supply. We don't fucking need you. We're going to print our own money. Well, they've yeah. got the whole um, take over the cities and take over the fucking yeah the state kind of Whoa. mentality because just about every fucking state in this country is you know populated in the cities way more than it is in the suburbs and the people in the suburbs don't have the same uh, voting record or fraudulent voting <laughs> i guess i guess one thing to, to what Drew was saying was that in texas you have these major cities like dallas and, and and austin and san antonio and those places but then there's many of these outskirts and um i just went back to texas in april for the um for the uh, solar eclipse and i went to franklin or fredericksburg i'm sorry fredericksburg and um oh did you when bump i went there to adam curry no, no, I didn't get a chance to. I was there just a few days. Um, but um, one of the things that I was really amazed with was that it, it had its own culture. Everybody was packing. Everybody had a, a cow boots on, and 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 um, you couldn't take those guns from them. Like there, no, there is you no try. way. <laughs> yeah, they are. They, you know, there's no way. And and so maybe in these major cities of like let's say Los Angeles, you know, uh, New York, Miami, yeah, they'll give up their guns. Be like, yes, because there's so much crime here in Chicago. Oh, like, yeah, they're gonna give, give up, up their, their guns, guns but... in South Central. If, if they, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just gonna stroll down to the police station. Okay, here you go. Here's my nine. <laughs> 
Well, if there's a, I'm if sorry, there's a my bad. The Dukes will. The, the <laughs> Democrats will. The Dukes will. If there's a day that they do come for your guns, you might as well shoot when they do because you probably <laughs> yeah. are. You're That's what Bill go, Cooper did, man. They're going to take you with the guns. So Eventually. Able, yeah, it may not let, be the exact same time. But it, if you do it right, it is at the exact same time. Well, uh, several months ago, I mentioned this before uh, on, I think it was TMP. They, um, I remember when they had the videos of the ATF and they were running around trying to um, go to people's houses uh, and, and see what kind of armament they had. And they were just like, <laughs> like, get out of here. Like, get the F off my property. Like, beat it. And I loved those videos. I was like, Amen to people just standing up and saying no, can't come on property, get out of here. Yeah, it's a little different when they force their way onto your property. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try yeah. not to think about that moment. Yeah, I know it's probably coming, but I try not to think about it. I want it to be more natural, yeah. you know. I don't want it to like feel rehearsed yeah well you know so one thing that you said Riz, early before and and i don't believe this either i don't believe it's going to be this big chaotic event that they're they're telling us it is through their programming you know with uh what was that movie from obama um the i, was, I still haven't uh, watched it yet but i have it saved. Uh, uh whatever his whatever his movie that he came yeah. out with on netflix um leave the world behind leave the world behind and and they make it like it's all chaotic and it's going to be in chaos like i don't believe that either mm-hmm. but you know one thing i've always kind of thought about and and i and i have protection in my house but one thing i thought about is is if that actually happens when they come to my doorstep and say hey mr romero like you need to do whatever i'm gonna be like hey you know what man take me take me to your leader because I know who you guys are. You're the stooges. You're there just to, you know, take me away. But take me to the leader. I want to have a conversation with that guy. Like, let's talk about some stuff, you know. Yeah, you'll be in a cage. Shoot. <laughs> Shoot him, okay? That's the fucking cage. They can't take probably, you. Probably, yeah, probably. And then... Uh, I'll yeah. be hanging from my ankles, right? Dra- drag the guy <laughs> who's barely alive back to the leader. And, uh, yeah, with a bunch of your friends. Yeah, oh, we'll take you to the leader. Yeah, yeah. let's go. You'll get yeah. to meet the yeah. leader uh, while you're being waterboarded. <laughs> That's typically when it yeah. happens. Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably you know, a nameless, yeah. faceless, big brother figure. So. Well, you know, that's the thing, man. I was, you know, I loved when, um, and I, I don't know if it was the first time I heard about this book, but um, I don't know if I got the book before or after Jordan Peterson mentioned Ordinary Men. And, wrong. They both have and, solid advice. And when you think about what happens in that story of why these Nazis would do this thing, and why cops are doing the things that they're doing nowadays it's like you know what they're just ordinary men you know um the is they, they will do. they will do what they are told to do correct unless you have a moral unless you have morals to stand up and say you know what i'm not gonna do this they are That's servants you... of authority they have been groomed and trained to do what in th- what authority instructs them to do to yeah. expect them to do otherwise is to be delusional yeah that's how they eat correct yeah so i experienced that firsthand in the military there's there were things mm-hmm. that i thought to myself I was like what you know you know when when i went on my second deployment to iraq in 2006, I questioned, I was like, what am I doing here? What, what is going on? And, and these targets or people that we were going after, I was like, is this right? I had a lot of questions with myself. And, and I, I remember this, I actually talked to a friend of mine back home and he was supportive of me like, Hey man, 
you're, you're fighting the good fight. You're fighting the good fight. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'm fighting the good fight. And I held on to that for years. Mm-hmm. I held on that for years. I'm fighting the good fight. I held on that for years. And that it pains me now to think that um, I, I had to go through some of that, you know? I think we have to go through it. I do. I think it's part of the learning process um, in order to hopefully at some point, this, this again, my personal philosophy of life. uh, I don't care if anybody else subscribes to it or not, uh, but I have to believe that we have the opportunity to break free from this realm, from this cycle. Yeah. Uh, that we're continually born into this um, this environment, this classroom where we yeah. learn lessons, right? Or yeah. that's you know, that's what we're supposed to be doing down here. I think, I think yeah. that's what we're supposed to be doing. Like all this interacting with one another and whatnot. Yeah. Um, you don't think the reptilians on the moon are capturing your soul and <laughs> it back here? I mean, reason? I can't probably, prove probably. that they're not. <laughs> right. Um, so I'm not quite sure like how all of that works. I know I finally figured out that like when the time comes, don't go towards the light. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like hang That's around yeah. and yeah. see what happens yeah. after that. Like don't just go for the first thing that presents itself. Right. Yeah. I've learned that much while I've been here. Right. So, yeah. Don't just grab for the the fucking first shiny thing that you see. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what so, happens. But so I think Drift. there are other levels beyond this that those who actually dedicate themselves during their time here can, you know, achieve afterwards. You know, Hopefully. I think- yeah. I, learned, I learned when I was a teenager that the more shiny things that people have on them, the lower their intelligence. Yep. It's kind of like a... Uh, it, yep. Well, well, Driz, think about this. Think about this. So um, I will I will say that I'm a, a Christian mystic or a Christian Gnostic. Okay. And one of the things that I remember from reading the Bible about uh, the Exodus, okay, and I thought, so when you go from the Genesis to the Exodus in the Bible, you, you, you go from the story of Joseph being, you know, the, you know, he's pretty much the Pharaoh of, of, of Egypt. And he brings his family there and it's a great time. And, and then they go through the time of hardship, okay, slavery, because they're growing so much. And I thought to myself, why would God allow Israel the nation of Israel to go through that, to go through the exodus of slavery when they, they, they were brought up to a point where they were highly regarded and then now they're in slavery. And I thought, why is that? Now, and I thought to myself, why wouldn't God just take Israel and take him around Egypt and they just go do something by themselves in some other area? And I, when you look at typology of what the Bible is, is that Egypt represents the world, the world system. Hmm. They had hmm. to go through Egypt. Okay. They had to go through Egypt to get out of this world system. Okay. To go to the, again, uh, Red Sea, to go through the baptism, to go through the uh, wilderness for 40 years and wander around in the wilderness, which is the world system, to then get into the promised land. It's a process. It's a process. You have to go through the Egypt hmm. because they were saying... Sounds kind they of were Masonic saying, to me. They were saying, well, this is, yes, it is very Masonic. So what they were saying when they came out of Egypt, was they were saying, they were telling Moses, they were complaining to Moses, we ate better in Egypt than we did in here. Mm-hmm. We, we, we ate better in slavery than we do out here. But the process was to take them to a place to where they could be free of all of that. Yeah. It was that. 
the fake Berlin. Eastern European ones, you know, changed their name and went back to the fake Israel and, you know, became prime ministers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the, that's the second half of the story, Rob. He was covering the first half of the story. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't, we don't have time to go over the second half. I think we touched on a little bit of it tonight. Uh, but we are just about at midnight on the East Coast, gentlemen. What's, uh, what last words do you want to get in? What parting shots? Um, don't trust the government. I don't know. There you go. That's beautiful. Love your neighbor. Yeah. Hey, just great conversation. Driz, um, Rob, first time I've seen you. Um, uh, you know, I know you're a oh, champion. He's here so... every Friday night, man. Yeah, so 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 well. Let me let me say this then. This is my first time to uh, this show, so um, Rob to me is new and a uh, hey, great input. I love it and uh, enjoy the weekend. Right on. Yeah. You do the same, brother. And we're great here uh, every Friday night, pretty much, unless we're not broadcasting. Feel free to drop in any time. It's been great. Yeah. Good night, everybody.